should you take hormone replacement therapy? I'm Dr. Jen, a metabolic and hormone expert. I'm double boarded in OBGYN and integrative medicine. And I wanna talk about hormone replacement therapy. The goods, the bads, the reasons to do it, the reasons not to do it, and just what is it exactly? So first, hormone replacement therapy. Um, one thing that people talk about a lot is that it can only be used for menopause, which is absolutely incorrect. Hormone replacement therapy can be used in perimenopause. Honestly, it can be used in premenopausal women. So hormone replacement therapy is just that you are restoring the hormones that are going down, that are declining. As we age, our ovaries stop producing as much hormones. In fact, eventually they just don't produce very much at all and we, we reach that state of menopause. So menopause is when we have no period, so no cycles um, for 12 months, 12 consecutive months. And if you don't have periods because you had an ablation or maybe um, you had a hysterectomy, then when you reach a point that you are starting to have symptoms, and these symptoms can include hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, difficulty getting to sleep, staying asleep, heart palpitations, joint pain, itchy ears, itchy skin, skin changes, so wrinkles and skin becoming more dry, pain with sex. All of these things are all symptoms of menopause. So if you're starting to experience these symptoms and you're over the age of 40, and even if you've had your uterus removed, you can certainly be uh, diagnosed just clinically, but you could also get an FSH level. And if your FSH level consecutively, so two separate months, for example, over the, the values over 30, you certainly are in menopause, but you do not have to have blood work. Let's talk about that actually for a minute. So do you need blood work to diagnose perimenopause and menopause? And the truth is you do not need blood work. You can, your doctor can make a diagnosis with just clinically your symptoms that you're going through. So if you're over 35, because again, the average age of menopause is 51, and it can be up to 10 years before that where you're experiencing perimenopause. So if you're over about 35 and you're having these symptoms, you can very well be in perimenopause or menopause if you've stopped your periods for one year. Now, should people get blood work? I do strongly suggest getting blood work for things like testosterone. And I suggest women get total testosterone and free testosterone checked because you can't tell what's going on with your testosterone from your cycle. And so it's important to know that number to see if you actually need uh, replacement therapy or if you want replacement therapy. So I do suggest that testosterone is a very valuable test for blood work, but you do not need blood work specifically for diagnosing perimenopause or menopause. So now let's talk about hormone replacement therapy. What is it, right? So hormone replacement therapy, typically that term refers to estrogen or estradiol, but we can talk about that, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. There are three types of estrogen in our body. So estradiol is our most active form of estrogen. It's typically the 25-year-old, 35-year-old estrogen. Estrone is the more inflammatory, typically postmenopausal estrogen. So you make more estrone as you age and get into menopause, then you do estradiol. That's because your ovaries are declining, making as much estradiol. And then estriol, which is the weakest of the estrogens. In fact, you can buy estriol uh, products over the counter to help with your menopause. So there are three types of estrogens. Progesterone, there's only one progesterone. And, and, and what I mean by that is that there's only one bioidentical progesterone, which is progesterone. There are synthetic progesterones called progestins, but they're a different term. We often kind of mix those together and say progesterone, but really a synthetic progesterone is called a progestin. And then testosterone, there's um, different types of testosterone. Um, and depending on what you decide to do for hormone replacement therapy, you may be on testosterone sipinate, or testosterone propionate or testosterone. It just depends on what type of replacement therapy that you use. So let's talk about the different types of replacement therapy. So from estrogen standpoint, you can have hormone replacement therapy that is FDA approved, meaning it goes through a standard pharmacy like Walgreens or Walmart or wherever you go to get your medications at the pharmacy. And the FDA approved estrogen options are estrogen via an oral form or a pill 
and it can be combined with progesterone. So there's hormone replacement therapy that has combos of oral estrogen and progesterone. And there's also estrogen replacement therapy options that are just oral estrogen. There's also a patch. Um, the most common is Vivel Dot. Um, and there's also Climera, but there are several brands of estrogen patch. And there's also estrogen cream that can go into the vagina. There's also uh, an estrogen ring that can be placed in the vagina. So there are FDA approved products that are uh, specifically sent to a standard pharmacy, but there are also compounded options. So a compounding pharmacy is able to make a product essentially customized for you. Um, so sometimes I use that with patients who don't tolerate those other medications or they really need a low, low dose. They're very sensitive to medications. And so they may need a low dose estrogen product. And most of the time you can actually get a compound with estradiol and estriol called Viest, or you can actually have them separate. It, you can really make anything that you want. And compounding typically comes in a transdermal cream. So cream that you place um, on your arm or belly or thigh, wherever you want to, but you can also put the cream down in the vagina or on the labia. Uh, you can do trochs or trochies, the dissolvable um, tablets that go under the tongue. So there are options from a compounding perspective. And honestly, there's even est estradiol. I use actually estriol cream to help with the bags under my eyes because I find it combined with hyaluronic acid and vitamin E to be awesome for wrinkles. So there's a lot of things you could do in compounding. Progesterone. So progesterone typically comes in an oral form called micronized progesterone, or the brand name is Prometrium. And that's the FDA approved progesterone option. There are synthetic progestins that can be used for hormone replacement therapy. I don't personally use those. I prefer to use bioidentical, which means that the hormone is exactly what's present in our body. So progesterone typically is oral. You can get it in a compound and form in a transdermal cream through the pharmacy. I typically prefer the oral because the data really for protection of uterus is in oral form. So I most with patients use oral progesterone and it can be compounded as well if you don't tolerate uh, micronized progesterone because it does have a uh, peanut oil base. And so some people don't do very well with it. In fact, it gives me migraines, so I have to use it the other form. Testosterone. So there is no FDA approved testosterone. There is uh, androgel, which is FDA approved for male um, use, but no female. So some providers use a 10th of a dose. So the they come in packets, so you use, use a 10th of it. I'm personally a fan of compounding because I want to know exactly what dose someone is taking. So if we compound testosterone in a transdermal cream, if I give you one milligram, I give you one milligram. If I give you two milligrams, I know exactly how much testosterone you're taking. So my preference is to use testosterone compounding. Um, some providers will not use testosterone at all because there's no FDA approved female testosterone. Although in other countries there are. So if you're in Australia, you can get a patch. So I personally think testosterone is essential for women um, in perimenopause and menopause. So if you do seek a provider for menopause care, it's possible that they will not provide you with testosterone. Testosterone, you can also get it in an injectable form and pellets. I do not um, personally think pellets are a great idea. I typically see women end up with too high of testosterone levels and end up with hair growth, and I'm not a big fan. So pellets for me is as a no. So now let's talk about risks, right? We talked about the types of hormone replacement therapy, but the risks. So with hormone replacement therapy, a study was done in the early 2000s called the Women's Health Initiative. And during that time when that study was published, it actually said that the risks of hormone replacement therapy were that it would increase breast cancer and blood clots and stroke. Now, what's important to understand is after 23 years and many, 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 many analyses into this study, we have realized that there were many flaws with that study. It was huge. It was a great study because it had a lot of women, but the flaws of that study were that the, basically you could be enrolled and you could be 40 years old and you could be 70 years old starting hormone replacement therapy. And a 40 and a 70 year old are very different. They are metabolically different. And so there was no distinguishing at the time the type of patient that was started on hormone replacement therapy. And what we know now is the health of your health is important to the safety of using hormone replacement therapy. So if you have heart disease, 
uncontrolled sugars like diabetes, smoke, uh, blood clot history, like you are at risk adding hormone replacement therapy for um, cardiovascular poor outcomes. So it's a really important that you are healthy prior to starting hormone replacement therapy, but that is also part of that uh, study um, that was a flaw was because we didn't actually know at the time that we need, or they didn't know, I should say, that they should distinguish between who is starting hormone replacement therapy um, based upon their health risks. The other thing is there were multiple arms in that study. So there was an estrogen only arm, there was an estrogen plus synthetic progestin arm, and then there was a placebo arm. The estrogen only arm, so these were women who had had hysterectomies, uh, they, it was actually protective against breast cancer. Believe it or not, we never talk about that, but it was protective against breast cancer. The estrogen plus synthetic progestin arm had an increased risk of breast cancer. And then obviously the placebo was the, you know, one in eight women, the control essentially. So what this means though, is now 23 years later, most of us who do menopause care do not actually use synthetic progestins. We use bioidentical, so meaning progesterone is in your body when you're in your 20s. And so we replace it with progesterone, not synthetics. So those things have now become, um, uh, the, the, essentially the, that has become obsolete that we consider hormone replacement therapy uh, increases breast cancer, it does not. So risks if you're on hormone replacement therapy, just in general. So again, depending on how healthy you are beforehand, you could have an increased risk of heart disease if you have diabetes, uncontrolled high blood pressure, other cardiovascular risks. Really, most people can, most women can take it. Most, it is actually safe for most women. Even breast cancer patients can use vaginal estrogens. So there are a lot of patients who are uh, candidates for it that are just not getting it. Okay, so we've talked about hormone replacement therapy. We've talked about the different types of hormone replacement therapy, the risks related to hormone replacement therapy. So now what do you do if you want to get hormone replacement therapy? First of all, you should make sure you're up to date on your health um, maintenance. So make sure you've had your mammogram, your pap, uh, you've had your blood work to make sure you're metabolically healthy. Um, I also suggest women getting DEXA scans if they're over 40 to really evaluate their bone health and even looking at brain health as well. Uh, two, you should seek a provider who is specialized in menopause care who understands the, all the options. So when you call the provider's office and, and ask how many menopause women do they take care of, um, what options do they provide, these are important questions to ask because there are some providers who only stick to FDA approved options, and there are providers who don't believe in hormone replacement therapy for women. So it's important that you ask the questions, how many menopause people are in your practice? What do you typically prescribe for menopause care? Do you have a whole body approach to menopause care? Do you incorporate nutrition, lifestyle, supplements? Do you incorporate more things than just HRT into menopause care? So making sure you find the right provider. There are organizations like menopause.org, which I mean, that's the website that can actually give you providers in your area. So you can look them up that might be uh, specifically trained in menopause care. I often recommend bringing your spouse or your partner with you because this is not a journey just for you. This is a journey for both of you. And I find, you know, sometimes partners don't really understand what's going through, what's going on in someone's body. So I find it really valuable to have a conversation with both the patient and the spouse or the partner um, to really understand what are the struggles that maybe even the, the partner doesn't understand about menopause. So um, we just don't have as much education as we need for women to understand what's happening to their body. And so I think it's really important that this partner is involved also in the treatment. You don't have to, but. I personally think it's valuable. So I hope this is helpful for sort of a doctor's guide to hormone replacement therapy. Um, please like and subscribe my channel. I am happy to provide more holistic health tips related to menopause. You can, in the comments, tell me what you're interested in hearing about and I'm happy to make some more videos specifically about menopause care.